when improved methods of cell fractionation became available in addition to lysosomes a second group of particles called peroxisomes were isolated from liver cells these particles are so called because they were characterized by their richness in peroxidase catalase d amino acid oxidase and urate oxidase peroxisomes though commonly found in liver and kidney of mammals are also found in cells of protozoa yeast and higher plants in plants following four types of peroxisomes are known number 1 glyoxisomes number 2 leaf type peroxisomes number 3 peroxisomes involved in uride metabolism and number 4 unspecialized peroxisomes now morphology of peroxisomes peroxisomes also known as microbodies or ovoid granules surrounded by a single membrane peroxisomes were discovered in 1966 by didio and his co-workers they contain a fine granular substance condensing in the center to form an opaque homogeneous core the nucleoid the average diameter of a peroxisome in mammalian cell is 0.1 micrometer to 1.5 micrometer and their number per cell may range from 70 to 100 as against 50 to 20 lysosomes per cell they are particularly abundant in liver and kidney cells peroxisomes differ from mitochondria and chloroplasts in having a single membrane and they do not contain dna or ribosomes since peroxisomes differ from chloroplasts and mitochondria in not having their own genome and protein synthesis machinery all their proteins must be imported by a process of selective import from cytosol although they are capable of self replicating like endoplasmic reticulum chemical composition biogenesis and assembly of peroxisomes chemical composition biogenesis and assembly of peroxisome have been studied in detail in recent years it is known that a number of proteins are associated with peroxisome which help in a variety of functions that peroxisomes perform now what are peroxisome membrane proteins and peroxisin proteins and protein receptors there are more than 100 proteins that are either targeted to peroxisomal membrane or are transported across this membrane of these large number constitute peroxisome membrane proteins pmps and at least 32 known peroxisomal proteins called peroxins which participate in the process of peroxisome assembly some of the genes that encode these peroxin include functions of peroxisomes since the peroxisome resembles mitochondrion in utilizing oxygen it was earlier believed to be a vestige of an ancient organelle which carried out oxygen metabolism in primitive cells having no mitochondria it was also assumed that the development of mitochondria rendered peroxisomes less useful since their functions were taken over by mitochondria however peroxisomes are now known to perform a variety of functions including the following 
number 1 removal of oxygen and production of hydrogen peroxide peroxosomes contain enzymes that use molecular oxygen to remove hydrogen from organic substances and produce hydrogen peroxide this hydrogen peroxide is utilized by catalase to oxidize a variety of substances including phenols formic acid formaldehyde and alcohol catalase also converts excess hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen these oxidative reactions are particularly important in liver and kidney cells for detoxification of various toxic molecules that enter the blood stream for instance 25 percent of ethanol we drink is oxidized to acetaldehyde in this manner number two breakdown of fatty acids by beta oxidation peroxisomes achieve breakdown of fatty acids molecules by a process called beta oxidation in this process alkyl chains of fatty acids are removed sequentially by blocks of two carbon atoms at a time and are converted to acetyl coenzyme a the acetyl coenzyme a produced during beta oxidation is exported from peroxisomes to the cytosol for reuse in biosynthetic pathways in animals this beta oxidation occurs both in mitochondria and peroxisomes while in yeast and plant cells it occurs only in peroxisomes number 3 photorespiration and glyoxylate cycle in plants two types of peroxisomes perform following two different but important functions number one in leaves leaf type peroxisomes help in photorespiration in which oxygen is used and carbon dioxide is liberated number two in germinating seeds they convert fatty acids into sugars by a series of reactions known as glyoxylate cycle so that these peroxisomes are called glyoxosomes in this glyoxylate cycle two molecules of acetyl coenzyme a produced due to breakdown of fatty acids are used to make succinic acid which leaves peroxisomes and gets converted into glucose this glyoxylate cycle does not occur in animals so that they are incapable of converting fatty acids into sugars number 4 enzymes and diseases caused by their deficiency peroxisome membrane contains two major proteins of 22 kd and 70 kd and several less abundant peroxisome specific proteins the organelle matrix has more than 40 enzymes which catalyze a variety of reactions these reactions can be anabolic for example plasmogen biosynthesis bile acid biosynthesis or catabolic for example beta oxidation of long chain fatty acids vlcfa the hydrogen peroxide metabolism utilizes three enzymes urate oxidase d amino oxidase and hydroxylic acid oxidase in production of hydrogen peroxide and a fourth enzyme catalase in its degradation there are also interactions between intraperoxisomal reactions and extraperoxisomal pathways needing transport of metabolites across peroxisome membrane number 5 peroxisomes and human disease peroxisomes are also responsible for certain diseases these diseases can be broadly classified into two types number one diseases due to deficiency of a specific matrix 
enzyme, which is called single enzyme deficiency. For example, ALD, adrenoleukodystrophy, and number two, disease due to defects in the formation of organelle like Zilliger syndrome. In ALD disease, which is most common inherited proximal disease at mid childhood, there is onset of insufficiency of VLCFA coenzyme A synthetase. It has been shown that ALD is caused due to defect in a protein ALDP having a homology to a 70 kd proximal protein PMP70 rather than to the expected VLCFA coenzyme A synthetase and is involved in the transport of VLCFA coenzyme A synthetase across the proximal membrane. ALDP belongs to ATP binding cassette ABC transporter protein superfamily. Evolutionary origin of peroxisomes. Evidences in favor of endosymbiotic origin of peroxisomes are actinobacterial origin. The reasons behind the actinobacterial origin of peroxisomes are number one, ability of peroxisomes to divide themselves and transport post translational proteins. Number two, presence of proteins in peroxisomes which are common to many prokaryotes. Number three, peroxisome localized proteins PEX1 and PEX6 are more closely related to the cell division cycle proteins CDC48, homologs in actinobacteria than to the endoplasmic reticulum localized CDC48. CDC48 is a cell division cycle protein from yeast. Number 4, actinobacterial proteins show higher levels of similarity to those of the peroxisome than to those of other prokaryotes. Evidences against endosymbiotic origin and in favor of endoplasmic reticulum origin include the following. Number one, peroxisome less mutants can restore peroxisomes upon introduction of the wild type gene through transformation. Number two, homology between the peroxisomal import machinery and the ERAD pathway in the endoplasmic reticulum. Number three, presence of a number of metabolic enzymes in the peroxisomes that were likely recruited from the mitochondria. Number four, localization of peroxisomal proteins to the endoplasmic reticulum. And number five, the similarity of some peroxisomal proteins to those localized in the endoplasmic reticulum. The evolutionary origin of peroxisomes still remains uncertain. Following two proposals are available. Number one, symbiogenetic origin from a prokaryote, and number two, endoplasmic reticulum origin as an imagination. Experimental evidence has been published for each of these two hypotheses. Prokaryotic symbiotic origin for peroxomes was suggested on the basis of the following evidences. Number one, the peroxomal membrane is composed of purely eukaryotic bricks and is thus useful to trace the eukaryotic in their evolutionary pathway. And number two, the peroxomal matrix proteins import system shares mechanistic similarities with the endoplasmic reticulum and proteasome degradation process indicating a common evolutionary history. Earlier, it was believed that the peroxisomes originate by budding 
from the endoplasmic reticulum and that its contents were imported from the cytosol. However, evidence is now available to suggest that new peroxisomes arise only from pre-existing peroxisomes by growth and fusion. Structure of vacuoles. The most conspicuous compartment in most plant cells is a very large fluid filled vesicle called a vacuole. These are non-cytoplasmic areas present inside the cytoplasm and are separated from the later by specific membranes. The term vacuole literally means empty space. It can be defined as a membrane bound organelle which is present in all plants and fungal cells. Vacuoles, although small and numerous, have been also found in animals and bacterial cells. Chemically, vacuoles are enclosed compartments which are filled with water containing inorganic and organic molecules. It is said that vacuoles are usually formed by the fusion of many membrane vesicles. Due to this reason, a vacuole does not have any specific size or shape. However, when it comes to the vacuole structure, it is designed so as to complement its function. Many mature and grown plant cells usually have a single large vacuole. There may be several vacuoles in a single cell, each separated from the cytoplasm by a single unit membrane called the tonoplast. The tonoplast is said to be a very active and dynamic membrane of this important part of plant cell structure. Generally, vacuoles occupy more than 30% of the cell volume, but this may vary from 5% to 90% depending on on the cell type. The vacuole in its central hollow region contains a fluid known as cell sap. This cell sap contains different compounds, some of which are secretory and some are excretory in nature. Also the vacuole in the middle depending on the cell type and requirement contains various concentrations of salts, sugars and different kinds of soluble pigments. This cell sap which is a part of central vacuole structure also contains various enzymes that are even capable of digesting the cell itself. These vacuoles arise initially in young dividing cells probably by the progressive fusion of vesicles derived from the Golgi apparatus. They are structurally and functionally related to lysosomes in animal cells and may contain a wide range of hydrolytic enzymes. In addition, they usually contain sugars, salts, acids and nitrogenous compounds such as alkaloids and anthocyanin pigments. The pH of the plant vacuoles may be as high as 9 to 10 due to large quantity of alkaline substances or as low as 3 due to the accumulation of quantities of acids for example citric acid, oxalic acid and tartaric acids. Depending on the contents and functions vacuoles are of four types. Number one, sap vacuoles. They are fluid filled vacuoles or vesicles which are separated from the cytoplasm by a selectively permeable membrane called tonoplast. It has a number of transport systems for the passage of different substances. A number of small sap vacuoles occur in animal cells and young plant cells. In mature plant cells, the small vacuoles fuse to form a single large vacuole 
which occupies up to 90% of the volume of the cell. The large center vacuole spreads the cytoplasm in the form of a thin peripheral layer. This is a device for facilitate rapid exchange between cytoplasm and the surrounding environment. This fluid present in the sap vacuole is often called sap or vacuolar sap. It contains mineral salts, sugars, amino acids, esters, proteins, waste products and water soluble pigments called anthocyanins and anthoxanthins. Some crystalline deposits may also occur. Number two, contractile vacuoles. They occur in some protestant and algal cells found mostly in fresh water. A contractile vacuole has a highly extensible and collapsible membrane. It is also connected to a few feeding canals, for example, paramecium. The feeding canals obtain water with or without waste products from the surrounding cytoplasm. They pour the same into the contractile vacuole. The vacuole swells up and the process is called diastole. The swollen contractile vacuole comes in contact with the plasma membrane and collapses. The collapsing is called systole. This throws the vacuolar contents to the outside. Contractile vacuoles take part in osmoregulation and excretion. Osmoregulation is required in freshwater habitats where water has tendency to enter the living cells. Due to the presence of higher osmotic concentration in the later continued entry of water shall cause bursting of the cells. This is prevented by throwing the extra water to the outside with the help of contractile vacuoles. Number three, food vacuoles. They occur in the cells of protozoan protestus, several lower animals and phagocytes of higher animals. A food vacuole is formed by fusion of phagosome and a lysosome. The food vacuole contains digestive enzymes with the help of which nutrients are digested. The digested material pass out into the surrounding cytoplasm. Number four is air vacuoles, also called pseudo vacuoles or gas vacuoles and have been reported only in prokaryotes. An air vacuole is not a single entity, neither it is surrounded by common membrane. It consists of a number of smaller submicroscopic vesicles. Each vesicle is surrounded by a protein membrane and encloses metabolic gases. Air vacuoles not only store gases but provide buoyancy, mechanical strength and protection from harmful radiations. Vacuoles play important metabolic roles in addition to growth these roles include the following storage. Vacuoles can serve as storage organelles for sugars, polysaccharides, organic acids and proteins. Most of the flowers of the fruits and vegetables are due to the compounds stored in the vacuoles. When needed, these primary metabolites can be retrieved from the vacuole and utilized in metabolic pathways. Toxic avoidance. Being immobile, plants cannot escape exposure to toxic elements in the environment by moving to another location. Nor do plants have an excretory system for the elimination of such substances. By accumulating heavy metals such as Cadmium, the vacuoles can be waved as a micro kidney inside each plant cell, filtering and sequestering potentially toxic ions from the cytosol, pH and ionic homostasis. Reactions in the cytosol are delicately sensitive.
to changes in pH and ionic strength. The concentrations of certain ions, for example, calcium are kept extremely low, enabling them to stimulate key regulatory enzymes such as protein kinases. The extremely low pH is due to the accumulation of sulfuric acid. In principle, the two proton pumps on the tonoplast can regulate cytosolic pH by pumping massive amounts of protons out of the cytosol into the lumen of the vacuole. Although this has been difficult to demonstrate directly, presence of pigments Many plant cells accumulate water soluble flavonoids, pigments called anthocyanins, which range in color from orange red to purple. In leaf tissue, such pigments are concentrated in the vacuoles of epidermal cells, where they probably function to prevent photooxidation of the photosynthetic apparatus by lowering the light intensity and by screening out ultraviolet radiations. In Petunia hybrida flower petal vacuoles contain the pH sensitive anthocyanin pituinidin, which can exist in either a red or blue form depending on whether the pH is acidic or alkaline. Four complementary genes have been identified which have a bluing effect on flower color when they are homozygous recessive. It would be interesting to know whether the genes encode subunits of the vacuolar ATPase or PPase and whether they are specifically expressed in flowers. Dear students, this is all about structure and functions of proxomes and vacuoles. Thank you very much.